to say, I'm going to need you to honor a pastor or a leader that you actually have access to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been wondering how me and Preston can do better at that. Yeah, like, yeah. But also a lot of these people, pastors are trash, so I'm also conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, everyone? We are back with another episode of Shaping the Culture. You know, like, let's just get to it. The whole sa secular sacred divide. There is no distinction in, in the scriptures. Some of us have trust issues with God. And right, some right. of us, yeah, it's like, does God really got us? You can't engage the culture with the gospel that first has not engaged you. Like, you know how people are like, oh, that's just who I am. No. no. <laughs> Shaping the code. One of the things that I have a grievance with, um, with the, the church today and, and church culture, um, is celebrity culture, celebrity culture within mm -hmm. the church. And I, you know, I, I've shared this with Preston many times. It's something that I've really, man, I've been so blessed by you and Preston in this, um, you guys push back against that and you guys do what you can to be as normal as possible and approachable, mm. approachable. I've never felt that you guys were out of reach. You know, you guys are kind, yeah. you guys are hospitable, like even open up your home, mm. all of that good stuff. And I, I wanted to ask you, why do you think today in church culture, you know, we desire fame and, you know, you know why is celebrity culture running rampant in the church? When, when I yeah. think about the first century church, what made them so distinct is because there was no other institution where men and women could come, where Jew and Gentile mm -hmm. can come, rich or poor can mm -hmm. come. Jesus through the mm -hmm. cross had evened out the playing field. And and sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like today in our context, we're, we're not, we're, we're trying to create division by giving people yeah. status when, when that's not yeah. God's heart. And so how do you feel about that? And, and how have you resisted celebrity culture? I read this book called uh, The Immortality. Um, it's, I don't remember what it, it was a book written in the 90s about, uh, it's not a Christian book, but a, around the concept of celebrity and fame and why it exists and how it's actually like a new phenomenon that uh, started really when TV started. Hmm. Because there, that something happened to culture when you could see a person yeah. and have a parasocial relationship with them where you felt like you knew them just yeah. because you know their face, you know their voice, you know their their demeanor, but you don't actually know them. And so yeah. it's it's something around that. So I think social media has probably just taken it to a whole nother thing, yeah. a whole nother level. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think I think as long as sin is in the earth, there will be celebrity because mm -hmm. there will be favoritism. Mm -hmm. There will be a lifting up of some people and a putting down of other people. You even got Paul dealing with that in, um, I think, Corinth. You know, like, they're like, oh, I follow Paul and I follow Apollos. And he's like, hey, like, chill out. I'm just, he's just planting. I'm just planting and God over here watering. So I'm going to need you to give all the glory and energy to him. So That's I think cool. it's a reality. Um, I think my heart has been how do I steward? Because I also think God does give influence. That's right. And so how do I steward that influence in such a way right. um, that God is honored? Yeah. But also how do I not hold on tightly to it? Mm. And so I think one way to not hold on tightly to it is to be generous with your influence. Mm. And so that's why I make it my business to, when I had Glory Conference, to share my platform with people that no one knew, mm. but was just as gifted and just as knowledgeable and just as necessary. Mm. Um, I think another way is to retreat as often as possible. Yeah. And so in Luke, uh, I don't know what chapter, in Luke it says with Jesus, it says, as the report of him grew more and more, he would withdraw to desolate places and pr pray. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting that they yeah. said, no, the more famous he got, the more he would go away into hiding. Wow. Wow. And I think, so I think as mm -hmm. influencers, you have to have Sabbaths away from your phone, yeah. away from posting, away yeah. from giving into this feeling of, no, I got to post. I got to, you know, I got to post content. Uh-uh. No, <laughs> trust God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if, if you lose 10,000 followers, so what? You know yeah. God. 
Um, mm. I also have been curious of how to motivate people back into their local churches. Mm. Yeah. Because I kind of think that's our responsibility mm -hmm. to say, I'm going to need you to honor a pastor or a leader that you actually have access to. Yeah. 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 So I've been wondering how me and Preston can do better at that yeah, like yeah. but also a lot of these people pastors are trash so i'm also conflicted <laughs> <laughs> it's like i don't want you to see my word higher than your local church pastor but your local church pastor might actually be bad yeah. so i don't know yeah but can I, I can i tell a story about that actually please <laughs> so, uh <laughs> i so yeah preston and i we did a few live podcast shows and then we ended it off in atlanta and mm -hmm. i had shared with preston you know i think i want to check out I won't say the name of the church, a, a particular church. Mm -hmm. And he's like, don't do that. Come to where we're at, you know? And I was like, okay, yes. I'll do that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I went to your guys' church and I will say, Jackie, like, I'm not going to put nobody on blast. The message was great. But I, I remember, I, I remember thinking like, I would have rather heard Jackie preach <laughs> today. Uh, but to, to see you and Preston and your kids, your whole family mm -hmm. just submitted to the teaching of someone else and to be in the local context. Like, I think you're already doing it by modeling it, you know, um, mm, by being, it. being like, I, I didn't know I needed to see, I needed to see that, you know, but just being in church with you guys and seeing you worship together as a family, um, mm. was, was beautiful. And I, and I get the, the, the conflict. What, what do you think is the solution? Because one thing I do want to do is, you know, we want to encourage people to be planted in the local church, but we also want to encourage pastors and teachers to be faithful. Um, yeah. You don't, you don't got to be as charismatic. Or you got you to be super charismatic. Yeah. But, you know, I do think that we have to be faithful. And that's something that me and my preaching team hold one another accountable to. Like, hey, we don't want to waste anybody's time. People are driving 20, yeah. 30 minutes to get here. Is it going to be worth it? And I don't know if that's even the right way to look at it, but we do yeah. little things to grow in our gift and to be as faithful as mm -hmm. we can because we know mm -hmm. eternity is at stake. And so what mm -hmm. would be your encouragement to pastors and young leaders who want to, who are more tempted to entertain than to be faithful? Ooh, wait. Bro. Read Second Timothy, First and Second Timothy. <laughs> uh, you yeah. can tell I've been. Yeah. Chewing on that th those books, but yeah, God loves you. Mm. He really does, yeah. and He cares for you, and He yeah. and He sees you. Yeah, and so when you entertain people instead of edifying, instructing, guarding, shepherding, leading in a holy way, you grieve God's heart. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are really because that's selfish yeah, yeah. It, it, you you become like the shepherds in ezekiel who are just feeding themselves yeah. instead of feeding the flock yeah. and so i think confess it if that's a temptation i think it's a temptation for all of us it's a temptation mm -hmm. for me yeah. you know what i'm saying but i think god is is safe enough to hear that because he already knows it yeah. but he also can grace us and sanctify our motives mm -hmm. so that in the teaching in the preaching in the leadership it really becomes an act of worship yeah. and therefore service. Yeah. Um, that's good. And so I think that's what I think that's what faithfulness has to fall back on. Like, how do I say it? I, like, for example, I was talking to President. He was asking me advice for someone whose wife is moving in a particular way that's not healthy. Mm. And I was like, I think the wife has to see that how she interacts with her husband is an extension of her relationship with God. If she yeah, sees yeah. them as separate, mm -hmm. then it's easier for her to do. Yeah. So in the same way, if yeah. I really don't see that my self-serving techniques mm. are an extension of my worship mm. or lack thereof, yeah. then it's easier to do it. Yeah. But if I if I have a reverence for God, then I enter that pulpit and I enter this these Bible studies and I enter these small groups with a sobriety. Because mm. um, I think God cares about that. <laughs>